What's up guys, I'm Jeff, the founder of Worldwide Cyclery, and today we're gonna to talk about fork offset. You've probably been hearing a lot about that lately as a bunch of different brands are messing with the offsets on forks and messing with the geometry of their bikes. What does it do, is it good, is it gonna help, is it better? Let's talk about it. So fork offset, it is a very complicated topic and one that is really kind of extremely hard to explain. There's a lot of good articles out there on fork offset and we wrote one ourselves. So if you really want to get into the nerdy geometry and all the math and all of the little nitty gritty details behind fork offset and what it does to the bike. No one knows what it means, but it's provocative. Uh, check the link below this video to the blog that we wrote. It's got a bunch of images and a bunch of text that describes every single thing. Um, that's really where all the nerdy stuff is. What I wanna talk about today is sort of like the, what I think the more important part of it is, right, aside from the nerdy aspect, which again, hit the blog if you're interested in that, but most importantly, why do bike manufacturers keep messing with geometry and what's this new offset thing all about? And then what does it actually do to the bike on the trail? Those are the key things that I wanna talk about because that's what you're probably interested in and what's actually gonna matter if you hop on a bike with a different fork offset. So what offset is, offset is basically the distance between the steering axis of the bike and where that uh, center point of the front axle is. It's uh, again, click the link below if you wanna see a lot more uh, images on that, but uh, that is basically what it is. Why do bike brands keep messing with it? Well, mountain bikes have been going through evolution for a long, long time. Um, you know, 26 inch wheels were the standard for a long time. Then 29ers came out. That changed uh, basically the trail of the fork. Then they had 27 five inch wheels. And uh, in, in bike companies, it's really cool. Part, my favorite thing about the bike industry in general is sort of the innovation and the care for innovation, right? I mean, whether it's component manufacturers or bike manufacturers, uh, everyone's really trying to make bikes work better. And they've been doing that for the last, you know, several decades and they're making them better. And yes, getting a lot more expensive in the process, but people keep buying them and they keep getting more and more fun to ride and more capable on all different types of terrain. So why are brands still messing with geometry and what's the offset thing about? They're still messing with geometry and offset yet again because they're trying to make bikes work better in more scenarios. And what I mean by that is, you know, you've had all these different bikes from a, from a cross country bike all the way to a downhill bike and everywhere in between. And you always have gives and takes, pros and cons, right? If you have a cross country bike and your bike is lighter and it's got a steeper head angle, yes, it's gonna climb better and be more efficient there, but everything you do to your bike that makes it better going uphill typically makes it worse going downhill and vice versa. Everything that you do to a bike to make it better going downhill is gonna probably make it worse going uphill. So. All these component brands and bike manufacturers are just trying to achieve, uh, I don't know if you could call it the pinnacle of a bike or a one quiver bike, but they're just trying to make their enduro bikes, their trail bikes more capable going up and down simultaneously. That's a pretty hard thing to do, especially with how evolved bikes are already. Uh, bikes work amazing, they have for a long time. Uh, the deal with fork offset, again, it's that same thing they're trying to achieve. They just want that bike to work better up and down and how can they achieve that? So I believe it was transition that really sort of, um, you know, kind of coined this new thing where they're really looking for that longer wheelbase slacker head angle because they knew that, you know, a downhill bike has a longer wheelbase and a slacker head angle and it's much more stable at speed. But because of that, it also sucks at slow speed, especially on like tight uphill switchback corners, which if you're out there climbing your bike at all, which you are on a trail bike, you have a disadvantage there. So fork offsets, uh, transitions really kind of revolutionized this recent trend to mess with them a lot. Prior to that, uh, I believe it was Gary Fisher. So Gary Fisher Bikes, which then eventually became Trek, uh, I think he was the one who really innovated that. The G2 geometry, he kind of pushed the offset out on, uh, on 29 inch wheeled bikes because Gary Fisher was kind of a pioneer in the 29er segment. And he realized that in order to get those bikes to work better with that larger wheel, because it went from 26 to 29, uh, he realized that you just needed to mess with that head angle and with that fork offset to get it to handle better. And it kind of stuck with that 51 offset for 29 inch wheels. And then it was sort of like in between 26, uh, like the 26 inch wheel offsets and the 29 inch wheel offsets. When 27.5 came out, the, you know, everyone kind of just assumed like, well, let's just kind of put it in between. Wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. 
And, um, and that's where it sat for several years and no one really talked about it. It was pretty standard when you bought a fork in the last like four years, uh, you either bought a 29er fork with a 51 offset or you bought a 27.5 fork and you probably didn't even know, like it probably didn't even say the offset because it didn't really matter. It wasn't really specified. Transition came to the table uh, with just the pursuit of a better mountain bike and their whole speed balance geometry, SBG. That's what all the new ones came out with. I think that was 2017 or 2018, their bike line has had SBG. And the idea there that Transition went for was they wanted to achieve, uh, you know, better downhill and better uphill simultaneously, or even just per se better downhill without like making a huge sacrifice to the bike's performance uphill. So better downhill, they wanted to go longer, longer wheelbase, longer reach, um, shorten the stem up to keep your body position correct, slacker head angle, because you know, longer wheelbase, slacker head angle, that is gonna work better at speed and going downhill, but traditionally it would work worse than going uphill because the steering gets sloppy as that head angle gets slacker and the bike gets harder to turn at slow speed as the wheelbase grows. So what they did is they just pulled offset back on the fork and all that really did was sort of push that wheel back closer into the frame. So that pretty much was allowed them to achieve what they wanted to. They wanted to get a longer wheelbase and a slacker head angle so it handled better at downhill, um, but they didn't want to sacrifice that uphill maneuverability, so they just shortened that offset and they realized, wow, they tested it, it worked. Uh, I believe it was Lars over at Transition that kind of like pioneered this. Uh, don't quote me on that one, I'm pretty sure he's the guy who figured this all out. And uh, they did that and that's when they sort of coined speed balance geometry and they realized, wow, we just made our bikes by reducing the offset on this fork, we were able to make them perform just as good uphill, um, but perform significantly better downhill because it has that slacker head angle and that longer wheelbase. So Transition coined it and figured it out and everyone's kind of followed suit. Yeti just released the uh, SB130 and SB150, their two new bikes for 2019, and uh, oh, the SB100 too. All of those bikes, they're all 29ers, and they all went with that shorter offset fork. And in the same time, they also got slacker than they would have normally been. So they've gotten slacker, they've gotten longer, and they've reduced the offset on the fork. Um, Yeti did a bunch of testing just like Transition did and I would assume most of these other brands did a bunch of testing. We recently had Chris Heath, uh, one of Yeti's own, out here to hang out with us and ride bikes with us and also talk about Offset a little bit and why Yeti made the decision to do that. Uh, Chris Heath is an absolutely phenomenal mountain biker. Uh, check out a couple clips of him riding and then listen to what he had to say about why Yeti went with different Offset forks on their 2019 range of bikes. So the new bikes, the 130, the 150, you guys did the reduced offset on both of those. And then you also did it on the SB6, uh, which was pretty interesting. So you upped uh, the travel on that fork on that bike by 10 mils and then did a reduced offset fork. So what did you guys at Yeti do to determine you really enjoyed that fork offset versus kind of what everyone had been using? Yeah, again, it's gonna just come down to back-to-back -to -back testing, right? Um, I think a big thing for us was head angle. You know, if you'll notice, when we launched the uh, the six, it was already super slack. I'd say it was, it was probably, yeah. probably way ahead of its time. Definitely. Um, 65 and a half. So that's kind of what is, is what I would say was our determining factor on whether it could it could house or, or fit a reduce offset fork. Um, so with that already being a slack bike, slack head angle, throwing the reduce offset fork on there, is just going to help it out, right? It's going to kind of bring that, that front wheel back in, mm -hmm. help you climb up the hill. So I think that, that was kind of our differentiating factor. So every bike in the line has a reduced offset fork, fork except for the SB5. And that's, you know, again, because of head angle. It was just, you know, just didn't work out great with it. I'm sure we tested it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how we decided to go to go that route. So getting back to what does this actually do? Like, how does it affect the bike? And are you going to notice it yourself when you ride one of these things? Well, that's a tough question to answer because everyone's different, right? Some people are much more uh, just aware of how their bike handles and when they hop on a bike with an offset fork, they're gonna be like, whoa, this feels totally different. I need to change my body positioning. Uh, it performs differently around switchbacks. Some people are gonna be really like, just notice it because they're really aware of everything about their bike and hypersensitive. Other people are gonna hop on a new one and be like, I have no idea what's going on. Um, and you may fall somewhere in between or you may be on either one of those spectrums. It has been interesting um, for me to see, you know, myself testing it, talking to all my buddies that are testing it, all the staff here at Worldwide testing it. 
um, and trying the new transitions, trying the new Yetis and seeing what people are thinking. And again, you know, what I've learned from being in the industry for a long time is again, some people are hypersensitive, some people are not sensitive at all and they could ride totally different bikes and not notice a difference. Um, and most people fall somewhere in the middle of that. So are you gonna notice a difference? Um, I have no idea. The best thing to do is just to try and demo bikes. I always tell people if you're really curious about what a bike rides like or how different it is, um, stop watching YouTube, stop reading forums and articles and just go out and try to demo those bikes and demo stuff back to back to see what you like. Um, I did have the chance to take, uh, you know, I, my favorite bikes are the sort of mid-travel 29er segments and I've been riding four fives. I had a couple four Yeti 4.5s that I really enjoyed, and uh, I was riding those for a while. And then, man, I had an evil the following for a little bit. I, I switched bikes pretty often because I like to try different stuff. As soon as Transition came out with their new bikes with SBG, I wanted to try that. So I hopped on a Smuggler. That's their mid travel. It's a 120 travel 29er. Uh, that's my favorite bike for uh, what I what the trails I ride most of the time. And I had the chance to go out and we filmed some stuff around uh, me on my Yeti 4.5. So it's a 2018 Yeti SB 4.5. It's, uh, it's nothing like, it doesn't have the latest and greatest innovative stuff, right? So Yeti didn't really hop on this whole offset, longer, lower, slacker, blah, blah, blah thing until 2019. So my 4.5 that you're seeing here is uh, a 2018, it's 29 inch wheels. It has, it's a size large frame, 51 offset fork and then the transition smuggler that I'm riding and have been riding for a little while now that is a size large uh, 29 inch wheels and it has a 44 offset fork so it's a reduced um, offset fork and then on the screen you can see sort of the differences in their the key things their head angles their wheel bases um, those are important things to factor in here but if you check out all this riding footage of me right here, me going through slow speed cornering, high speed cornering, and then just hitting general sections on the same bikes, um, does it look any different to you? Uh, did it feel much different to me? Not really. Uh, I, you know, I think I fall somewhere in between hypersensitive and not sensitive at all. Um, maybe closer to the hypersensitive. I'm not too picky though, and I tend to just like get used to a bike. And riding these things back to back, and in sort of switching between bikes with offset forks with the new reduced offset and bikes that had the 51 offset, it's not a massive difference. Um, it does help, right? I, I can confidently say it does make a difference and I can notice that in the way that the bike is more stable. It does exactly what they're looking for. It's more stable going downhill uh, because it's slacker, because it has a longer wheelbase, but it still manages to make it around slow speed corners um, with ease, right? Considering how long and how slack that bike is. Um, are, is it gonna make the bike more fun? Probably not, probably still gonna have a great time on it. Uh, is it gonna make it better and faster? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, again, uh, this whole offset thing, if you're hearing a lot about it, it really is just yet another sort of small iteration. It's not a revolution, uh, it's an iteration. Bikes, I feel like, are pretty amazingly optimized right now, uh, sort of like smartphones, right? They've, to some extent, like plateaued. They're not, maybe not flat, but they're not like, skyrocketing as far as innovation and difference as new one comes out. So uh, yeah, minor iteration, although it's, it's kind of the talk of the town right now, all these companies are going with uh, longer slacker and reduced offset forks. And it is an iteration that makes sense and does work better. Is it monumentally better? I don't think so. Is it a little bit better? Yeah, but again, that's my opinion. Best thing to do is go out and ride a bike uh, with an offset fork and see what you think. Uh, hit us in the comments if uh, you've ridden one of those things or any other questions you have around offset forks. Again, check that blog if you really wanna see all the nerdy stuff behind fork offsets. Hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys in the next one.